Okay, so uh, in this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to create a web form. So, a, uh, for example, a contact form on a website that uh, when you type some information in, such as this one, um, oops, can't type, um, and submit it, it will go off to a second page and display that information. So it's creating a dynamic page. In other words, the, comment, the content on this page changes dynamically based on what the user enters in the form. Um, additionally, this is going to have a little script in it that generates an email and sends it away to uh, the owner of the website. So uh, that's what we're going to be working on in a second tutorial. Uh, today all we're going to do though is look at how we go ahead and create this form. So uh, here we have in Dreamweaver we have a page I created already called contact.html and uh, I've just cleared a bit of space here where I'm going to insert the form. So uh, at the top of the screen, most of you will probably see the common insert menu. What I'm going to do is use the forms insert bar. And on the far left there is the first button, which is a form. So if I click on that, it will insert a form. And you can see it has the red dotted lines around it. And additionally, down in the properties, uh, yeah, sorry about that, the uh, phone went off then. <laughs> um, so here we are anyway with the properties of that form. Uh, down the bottom here you can see there's an action. Now that's what will happen when you click on the submit button. And uh, what we're going to have happen is we're going to send the information through to another script which I've called sendmail.php. So it's written in um, the PHP scripting language and that's going to generate the email for us. Uh, we're also going to use PHP to dynamically display the information from the form on that other page. Also check that you're using the post method to send it. and uh, that's all we really need here. So if you click up there in the, inside the form, and I'm just going to type in name, and uh, at the top here in the insert bar, I'm just going to grab the, we'll click on the text field button, and I'm just going to ignore all that, Let's click OK, and uh, there's my text field. Now if I select it, under properties you can see that by default it's called text field. Now I need to give that a more logical name so I'm going to call this one name and I tend to stick to all lowercase with no spaces or symbols just makes it a bit simpler if I'm consistent and also worthwhile giving it a set width so I'll just go with 50 completely arbitrary you can pick any number you want um, and also the maximum characters is a good idea if you want to avoid having somebody um, dump a million characters in your form so I'm just going to set a limit of 50 I think that should be big enough for uh, the name and yeah. So I'll just add another line and we'll do another field for the email address that we want from them. So I'll repeat again, insert another text field, okay, uh, and select that, name it, again give it a distinctive name, so I think email would make sense. And I'm actually going to go with the same settings, 50 and 50 for there. Again though you can put in anything you want there. Um, the third field, which is going to be a little different, is for comment. And uh, again, it's a text field. But this time when I select it, um, I'll give it a name, comment. But uh, I'm actually going to make it multi-line rather than single line. So when I do that, um, I can set the character width, and I'll go 50 again. But this time I can also set the number of lines, and say I go for six lines. So when I press enter, you can see how big it is. Now you notice the label isn't lining up and stuff. Now you can use CSS for that or put it in a table and line it up. But that's uh, something for another day. And um, I guess the last thing possibly worth looking at um, are radio buttons. So often you'll see on a website they might say like, would you like to receive our, oops, can't spell, like to receive our email newsletter. And um, they use these little buttons at the top here called a radio button and that's because you can only select yes or no, you can't select both so they exclude each other. So um, I'll just put yes and no in there and then I'll go over the settings. So right now if you have a look I select that first one in the properties you can see it's been given the name radio with a checked value of radio so in other words if this one's selected um, the value radio will be sent through this one for no, radio 2 and radio 2. So they don't have the same name. What that means is they're not grouped together. So they need to share the same name if um, I need to be able to select one. 
or the other. So I'll just change the name, just again, something that makes sense, so newsletter. Now if it's checked, because this is the yes radio button, I'd want to say yes. So this would come through uh, in my email saying newsletter equals yes. This one over here, I'd want to say newsletter equals no. Additionally, you can um, choose to have the initial state checked or unchecked, and I think it's probably more polite to have no as the checked state. It's a little sneaky to have yes, so uh, there's that. And last thing we probably need in this form is a submit button, and again at the top here in the insert bar, that's our button there. So I'm just going to insert that one, and by default it will come through as a submit button. Uh, you can change the text on it, at the moment mine just says submit. Uh, but you can type in there and anything you want will appear on the text of the button. So uh, that's our form, and just to recap, as I select it there, you can see the action of the form. It's going to send it away to this page here called sendmail.php, where we will generate an email, and we will also display the content of the form on the page. And that's all for this tutorial.